Hi, Tim Frederick for MVP Machine. I have an interesting project that we'd like to share with you. This is a piece of basically plexiglass. It's acrylic, clear plastic. We want to reuse it because it's kind of pricey. This is one inch thick. It was originally used for a display for one of the products we used to make. We no longer have a need for it. And we want to cut out a section approximately this big. Um, seven inches across it's going to be approximately eight inches wide and we want to reuse it and remove the engraving the engraving is approximately thirty thousandths of an inch deep and we want to make it clear again after that which is kind of the challenge we've never tried this before and we want to see if we can make it work with a minimum of polishing afterwards so what we decided to use was a suburban tool fly cutter you may have seen some of our other videos that feature this fly cutter. We use it quite extensively in steel and aluminum, and it provides a beautiful finish. Um, we're going to try it on this plastic, and we feel like it's going to work pretty well. This is the safety sheet. Be sure to read this, because it can be quite dangerous if improperly used. And then there's some suggested feeds and speeds for different materials, uh, none for plastic. So we're going to establish our own. Uh, basically how the cutter works, here's the cutter body, 3.5 inch diameter body. This is a Cat 40 shell mill arbor, it's a 1 inch arbor, and that's the diameter of this hub. And these keys are 3 eighths inch, that's a pretty standard 1 inch shell mill arbor. They all come with the same features, it's a half 20 threaded hole that goes through there. And the cutter body fits right on there locks into the keys and then this half 20 <coughs> socket head cap screw bolts it down to the arbor. I'll leave that out for now and we're going to be using for our project the set that we have here comes with three bars. It's a 5 inch bar, 7.5 inch bar and an 11 inch bar. We're going to be using the middle bar which is a 7.5 inch bar. You want to keep the size matched appropriately to the diameter that you're trying to cut and <clears throat> this seven and a half inch bar with it so that's set to the smallest diameter it's adjustable but set to the smallest diameter it's approximately 7.75 inches and then its largest diameter is about ten and a half inches and when you get it set to where you want it we'll probably use it somewhere in the middle here lock down the three set screws, make sure they're good and snug, and you're ready to go. Um, these cutters come from Suburban Tool with a tin coated insert. You can specify um, whatever insert you'd like. We're not going to use the tin coated insert that's primarily for steel. Um, we're going to be using a uncoated insert. It's carbide uncoated. The reason being is that the tin coating provides like a slight radius um, and we want as sharp of an edge as possible on this insert. There's another insert available which is ceramic which works quite well for high speed cutting of steel or hard, harder materials um, but I don't think that'll work too good for our plastic project here. So we're going to get this um, basically cut to size set up on our Fidel and uh, we'll show you a fly cut and see how clear we can make this thing just with the fly cutter and we know there's going to be some additional polishing required but we're hoping to keep the polishing work to a minimum um, on the buffing wheel maybe three to five minutes hopefully less so we're going to get it set up the, on the machine and the next segment will show you us taking a cut on it Okay, we have the piece set up in the machine. We've cut both ends, radius the corners, and we're ready to fly cut the surface. We're taking 35 inch, uh, 0.035 depth of cut, and uh, we're going to be running the cutter at 1250 RPMs, about four and a half inches a minute.
And there we have it. <clears throat> Our engraving is done. Pretty nice finish. We're going <clears> to <throat> take that and stuff it up a little bit with some uh, red scotch right? Kind of vibrating sander. And that should be good enough to send it over to the polisher. Okay, here we have our piece. Um, <clears throat> it basically has this hazy uh, finish, not bad at all. You can't see any machining lines in it. We're going to polish it on this buffing wheel. Um, <clears throat> first, going to basically apply the buffing compound, which is, you can't really tell because it's kind of black, but this is actually a white um, diamond. <clears throat> buffing compound. We get some on the wheel. And then we want to basically go from a few different directions on this um, just to even out the finish so to be able to see it through the part. Aside from the wax that's on here from the buffing compound, it's essentially clear again. What we're going to do is clean that up with some alcohol and uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's cleaned up. Alright, now we just have regular rubbing alcohol. Um, we're going to put on a nice clean paper towel won't be afraid to soak it I'm just taking off the wax and fingerprints on both sides we didn't polish the edges so we're gonna have to do that what we wanted to show was the face and it 
looks pretty good to get a dry paper towel here. And we basically turned it clear again. So there you have it. <clears throat> We've uh, taken 35 thousandths off that face, gotten rid of the engraving, and now it's ready to be re-engraved and reused. Thank you for watching.